everyone, welcome to part two of my paranormal and spooky story series that's happening for this week only, since Halloween is just round the corner. All the stories that I'll be telling you this week are 100% true and I haven't added anything for entertainment purposes or dramatic effect. All the stories that I've chosen to tell you this week are the ones that I would say are the more believable ones. There are some that are a bit more scary and maybe sound a bit more far-fetched. But if you would like to hear more of these paranormal or spooky stories after this week, then please let me know in the comment section. So with that being said, let's get on with part two. In part one, I talked about a nightclub that I used to work in that was a picture hall in the 1920s and how I loved the interior of this building, but I always found the upstairs balcony area to be quite creepy. So once I had worked there for a few months, they converted the upstairs balcony area into what they called a cocktail bar. Really, it was the worst cocktail bar ever. It wasn't even real cocktails that we made. On the nights that the cocktail bar was open, it was me that was in charge of the bar, and sometimes I was up there on my own. Every now and then, they would put one other person up there to help. On this night, I was behind the bar by myself, and another member of staff came up at the end of the night to make sure that all the customers were gone. So once they shouted that all the customers were gone, I was standing counting the money in the till, and I was just talking away as usual, like... The way you do, like, oh, I can't wait to go home, or we're nearly out of change, or I need to go down and get drunk to restock the bar, or whatever. And the bar was a little bit higher than the floor, and you had to come up a step to get served. So somebody was just walking round, and I just thought it was one of the glass collectors. So I was just talking away, as usual. At the side of the bar, there was a little gate that we had to keep closed so that customers couldn't just walk behind the bar. So I was just standing counting the money. And the gate opened and I just thought that it was my friend coming in to help me restock the bar. And I was standing just still talking away or whatever, counting this money. And then I felt them like walk behind me and then put their hand like on my hip and on my back. Which I thought was a bit strange. So I turned round and there was nobody there. And I actually got the fright of my life. I could feel the colour like draining out my face. I went freezing cold. I just, I was in shock. And I didn't know what to do, I just I was just standing there with the money looking behind me like obviously at this point when I had turned round I didn't feel any hand on my side or on my back but there was nobody there at all and I turned round and looked at the gate. Now the little gate had a had a like a latch on it and that was opened and the gate was opened. Now when I was counting the money I actually seen the gate opening and I was just standing there thinking like how did this happen? How did that gate open? And then I heard somebody walking behind me and then I felt them touching my back and I was terrified. I'm the type of person who, when I'm scared, I'll try and just talk to myself in my head, calm myself down. Maybe I'll talk to myself or I'll sing or I'll just I'll just do whatever. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm not the type of person who'll get scared and then I'll just run. Like, I just kind of stand there and I don't really know what to do. So at this point, when I had turned round and there was nobody behind me, I just kind of said, I'm not scared. Like, <laughs> like, I was telling myself that I wasn't scared and I was saying it out loud. Because I think to myself, when you watch films with serial killers and then you see people going, oh, please don't kill me, please don't hurt me. Like, that's what they want you to do. Like, they want you to beg for your life. So I think that in these times when I'm actually petrified, I think the same about ghosts or spirits or whatever this was. And I think, I'm not going to show that I'm scared because that's what they want me to show. I know that that doesn't make any sense, but that's how I justify this in my head at the time. So I just said out, out loud, I'm not scared. But I was, I was absolutely crapping myself. So I carried on counting the money. And at this point, I think that I, I was doing that with the money, but I wasn't actually counting it because I just, my mind was blank. I didn't know what to do. So I put the stuff into the bags and went downstairs and I, I told somebody else behind the other bar and they were like, nobody's been up because we didn't really have a lot of staff in there, it wasn't exactly busy. I counted the money downstairs and the whole time my heart was just like, I could hear it beating, do you know what I mean? Like I had just got such a fright and I was just, I was just honestly like, I was so in shock. One of my friends had came up to me and says, oh my God, what happened to you? You look sick. And I told her about it and I think, honestly, I don't think that she believed me. But everybody in there had felt eerie things or they felt that it was a bit creepy. So I don't really think that it was that they didn't believe me. They just didn't really know what to say. 
One thing that I always think to myself when people tell stories like this is that sometimes when you're in a situation that you already feel scared, you start to imagine things in your head or you start to hear things. But in this situation, I wasn't feeling creeped out at all. I was just finishing my shift and I wasn't thinking anything strange whatsoever. I genuinely seen this person walking around and I wasn't creeped out by it. I just thought that it was a glass collector and I was talking away to them. I had no reason to think it was anything else. And then when I seen the gate opening at the side, I just thought that it was my friend coming in to help me stock the bar. I had no reason to look up. And I also had no reason to, to feel fear or to feel anything that was dodgy. To me, I definitely feel as if there was something else in that bar with me. There's no way that I would have seen the person walking around and then for that latch to actually open and the gate to open and then for me to feel somebody touching my back. It just doesn't make any sense. And as I said in part one of this series, this building is known to be haunted and a lot of people have seen things in there in the past. If you've experienced anything like this yourself, let us know in the comments section. If you're sceptical and you feel like you have an explanation, please feel free to share it with us. But it isn't because I've made any up and I haven't exaggerated for entertainment purposes. All other videos that I add to this series will be linked in the description box below. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and if you're new here, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching. Bye!